to Jeff Krenage live at the Intercontinental Hotel throughout this holiday season. What we're going to try and do is inspire the nation because it is the season, after all, to be jolly. And there's an amazing program coming out of both Kilifi and Kuala counties. Young women taking charge of their respective futures. A program called Moving the Goalposts. And it's all about getting young women together from the ages of 9 to 25 through a football program. That's right. And then teaching them life skills beyond that. Thanks to folks like my guest, Rachel Muthoga, Executive Director of Moving the Goalpost. And the Twitter handle is at MTG Kilifi. Mine is at Krenanga Jeff. The hashtag, Jake Gale. Rachel, I mean, this is an amazing program. And I, why aren't you guys making more noise about it? Or are you and maybe we're not listening? Maybe, uh, yes. I think I would say a bit of both. Mm -hmm. But then that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here to make noise about this program. And really to just get people interested in looking at this, rather than looking at youth as the youth problem. Let's look at the youth and look at what are the solutions or what are the, what are the opportunities that having all these young people, like, like Kenya having the highest, one of the highest population of young people amongst other countries, what is the opportunity that that presents for us? Yes. And you know, the other thing is, you know, there's so many who are idle. Yeah. And idle, not just, you know, lounging in the street corners doing nothing. There's, you know, they're literally on Twitter and Facebook and other social media just, you know, hating on each other in the rest of the world and saying, yeah. why me, why me, why can't someone do something for me? And here's a program where they can do something for themselves. Oh, yes, for sure. Because, and, and those who are spending time on Facebook and Twitter, they should know their advantage. They actually have a phone that can get on Facebook. They have a phone that can go on Twitter. So look, a lot of the girls we work with are coming from severely disadvantaged backgrounds where, you know, tel electricity, constant flow of water, all those things are not ascertainity, you know? So looking at, just looking at the level of poverty that pa some parts of Kenya are still experiencing. Kenya, uh, Kilifi and Kwale being two of the poorest counties in Kenya. Just looking at what can be done to bring those up to at least the power of those who are on Facebook and Twitter complaining. You know, they don't know that they are very advantaged. And so looking at how can we be able to bring development, to bring understanding, and to give those who are in Kilifi and Kwale an equal opportunity to so at least compete or to have the same level of opportunity to do what they can with their lives. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I was thinking, you know, you, you talk about this program and all the challenges and the hurdles and the setbacks, and, 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 and I say to myself, what keeps you all going? You know? The girls themselves, mm. to be honest. It's really inspiring when one of the girls walks up to me when I'm going to my car and she says, oh, Rachel, I started a business. I'm selling this and that. Would you like to buy some? And I'm usually stuck. Of course, I buy from everyone because I really want to support them. Yeah. But then that gives me, that keeps me going. When I see a young lady who tells me, yes, I start, I have, I've been out of school for two years, but I've registered now. I'm going to get my CPE certificate. I feel inspired, and for me, it's it's them taking charge. You know, all we can do is be, a, you know, a way. But then once we show them the way, they're going to walk it themselves. And so, watching them walk down that path, I'm really inspired. And so that keeps that really keeps us going. Yeah. Yeah. Does the money ever run out? Because when you think about this, I mean, obviously, money is the big, it's one of the biggest factors. Yes. Does that run out? It does. It can. Mm. Uh, it's my job to ensure that it doesn't ever run out. <laughs> but it's certainly something that we are constantly worrying about and thinking about how to make sure that we have sufficient funds to be able to not only pay salaries but to run the programs and to be able to continue with expansion. We have innovative new ideas that we are getting from the young people and we want to be able to go from idea to you know, actual implementation. And so just ensuring that we have a consistent flow of funds to support that process is something that is, is not easy. Yeah, is there a fear that if the money ever does run out, this program will come to naught, it'll come crashing down to zero? No, I mean, the way I see it is that it's been on for 12 years. The community has, have, has accepted it, has taken it up. It may not necessarily have the same face, but I believe that the community would continue to take it up. And football and Kilifi will all, foot, women's football will always be 
something that's talked about in Kilifi for years to come. Mm. Whether or not this program is on. Yeah. Yes. Pende wasi pende. Pende wasi pende. It's here to stay. So this year you all decided to have a peace festival. Yes. Tell us about that. And this peace festival was held under the auspices of something called the Street Football World Network. This is a network of organizations all over the world that believe that football is a, is a way that we can work towards development. So different organizations that are working on youth empowerment like ourselves, others working on water and sanitation, different projects, but all through football. And so this network, so we belong to the East Africa uh, region. And so we were hosting the East Africa Peace Festival, which brought about representatives from all the countries in East Africa. We had a number of teams that came to play, about 12 teams that came to play. And the real, the core of this, of the festival, is one, getting young people to interact with each other. For some of them, and some of them even Kenyans, just getting to the coast and seeing the ocean was a wondrous experience. Then there's the cultural exchange of, you know, the Ugandans having to interact with girls from Kilifi and language and having to deal with the language barriers and still managing to interact and have a great time together. And so looking at enabling young people to broaden their scope, to see that the world is bigger than, you know, what they've seen before. But also that cultural intelligence that comes from travel, that comes from interacting with people who, for, who are from a very different background and understanding each other. But at the core of it, from a football perspective, is something we call the football three methodology. This is a methodology that is really based on getting the young people who participate to understand fair play and to understand the roots of where peace comes from. Because it's a football tournament that does not have a referee. We say it's a, it's a match that has three halves. So three halves because there's a pre-match discussion where the young people who are going to participate will sit as a committee, sort of, through mediators, they have to agree on the rules that will, be go that will govern that match that they're about to play. And then when they go on the field, they are the enforcers. So they have to abide by the rules, and they're also the ones to enforce the rules. Wait a minute, there's no referee? There's no referee. So no one yells and says, stop. They are the ones who have to remember what the rules are and be able to play a game and compete with the rules. And if there's a foul, say, let's say there's a typical foul. They all have to agree that it's a foul. <laughs> and it works because, you know, that's how... Only real... women can do that. Man. No, no, no. no. This, is a, this was a mixed team. That's the best part. This one, these, are, these have to be mixed teams, boys and girls. And uh, so the way it's played is that it's teams of six. So there's a goalie on each end. Mm -hmm. But there must be at least... Uh, each team must have at least two girls so that there'll be equal participation of mm -hmm. girls and boys. And so what that means is that they get to... They, they have the pre-match session, then they go and play the match, and then they have a post-match discussion. And any issues that might have arisen are dealt with at that point. But what, what they start to understand is that the world can't function, and this can't be a tournament if we're all flouting the rules. For the tournament to proceed and for people, you know, teams to be left out and teams to proceed, then we must all abide by the rules. Well, let me ask you this, Rachel, and I'm just trying to visualize a, a game like that. Uh -huh. Isn't it chaotic? It's <laughs> not chaotic because once you put the power to determine and once they've all agreed that these are the rules, you will find that they're the first to abide by them. They, it's one match where actually the, the only thing that delays is how much they stop to help each other if by mistake I drop you. <laughs> you know, if I kick you in the shin, yeah. I'll be like, oh, sorry, sorry. No. Because I want the fair play points. Because there's points for playing fair. So they know that they will only go ahead if they're actually abiding by the rules and they're playing fair. So actually you find that they quickly internalize that and quickly are able to say, no, we agreed you can't do that, so there's no way. Mm. And they're able to proceed. And there's no arguments on the field, there's no... No, because fists. they know there's going to be the post-match discussion. No fists flying. And if you think about it, it's the same way society works. Things like elections, you, ha you, you sit, parties come up, we, we elect them, and then we have the five years, and then after that we have another discussion, like how did they do, yeah. what are our options going forward. It's the same way society works. Yeah, thank God you don't have an IEBC in there. <laughs> Well, they, they have to be the ones that determine all these things. And it works. And it works. And really what it does is it in, internalizes the notion of what is the individual's role in society. If I'm not breaking all the rules, what does that mean for my teammates? What does that mean for the other team that I have bound myself in an agreement with, that I will not flout these rules? What does that mean for our tournament? And at that, you know, when we're working with younger, because for, that, for the tournament we're working with 14 to 17, at that age, once that message is translated in that way and internalized, 
it's a lifelong lesson. Mm. It's a lifelong lesson. And they'll be able to stay with that. And they'll start to see the world in a different way. Yeah. yeah. So this was the first peace festival. Yes. When is, where and when is the next? So this was the, uh, this was the first time for moving the goalpost to hold. The first peace festival was actually held in Kitale last year. Mm -hmm. Then we hosted it. So the next time it's going to Tanzania. It's actually going to be in Iringa. One of our partner organizations is going to be hosting that. Yes. And you're going to take all the we're, girls there? We are going to take a team to Iringa to participate. And they also get to see how girls and, Tan uh, girls and young men in Tanzania live. Mm -hmm. And just get to understand each other and interact. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the greatest satisfaction you get from all this, Rachel? I think for me is, is when we have graduations. Mm -hmm. Because... We work with girls from 9 to 25. When you turn 25, we have to sort of move you on along. And the way we do it is we take them through a process where, you know, just uh, to understand that once you're out of the Moving the Goal Post program, this is what you should do. And just some guidance before that. But then to see them going off into the world and ready to take on that challenge without us as a sort of crutch or as a support. And to see some of the girls who are right now about preparing to exit who are saying, yeah, I'm ready. And if you need me when, I come, when I'm gone, just call me. I'll be back, and I'm happy to come and give my time to the younger girls who are behind me. And for me, that's what women's leadership is about. OK, it's good to have women leaders in the political sphere. And yes, we push for that when we advocate for women represented in all levels of, is it government, be it the political sphere everywhere, women need to be represented. But it's also about how much are you able to give back to your community right where you are? Yeah. Are you able to help your neighbor? Are you able to be the woman that will say, I can see wrong being done in this community and I'm not going to let it go? Are you going to be that mama in the market who says, no, this is wrong and I'm not going to just keep quiet and watch it happening? Yes. I know the, I'm sure the tweets are coming in thick and fast and the one question being asked by people is how do I get involved? How do I get in touch with you guys to get involved? What so, do they do? So one of the ways that they can get involved is to first of all get more information about us. We have a website. It's www.mtgk.org. MTGK standing for Moving the Goalpost Kilifi, so our initials. And you can also go and and uh, look at look us up on Twitter, Facebook, look at our YouTube channel. And that's interesting because we actually have videos of our girls telling their own stories. So it gives you an understanding of what is a typical girl from moving the goalposts, what is her environment, and what does she deal with. Another way you can get involved is also we have something called the Friends of Moving the Goalposts, Friends of MTG. And all the information is available online. You can be able to go out and to be able to support us. Some, someone may be sitting there, a philanthropist, who is saying, I'd like to give some money to this. That's one of the ways you can support us, ensure that we have the financial stability to be able to keep this program going. Yeah. And so that would be really helpful too. Do you see MTGK, instead of Kilifi one day being MTG Kenya? Do you, do you see that? Yes, that's, a, those are, that's the stuff that my dreams are made of. And so I think that's something that definitely could happen and that we could be able to widen our impact. It's not something that we have the capacity to do immediately, but it's something that we could definitely be able to achieve. When you all started this 12 years ago, did you envision it would pick up legs, it would gain legs, and, and really, I, I mean, this thing has grown. Was, I don't think it was that clear. And uh, that's why, maybe that's why we started as MTG Kilifi. <laughs> like, we knew our focus area and we were yeah. planning to stay there. But then as it's grown, it's definitely, you know, we moved to Kuala and it was just natural because we, as the programs were growing, that was an area where we could see a definite need. And it's an area where we've learned, we've seen the challenges in Kilifi are slightly different from the challenges in Kuala. And just learning the dynamics of that, and of the, the growing pains really as the organization expands. And we're learning from that and trying to see what are the different factors here. Well, how, do they, how do we still make sure that our program is impacting even when we're facing different challenges? Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I want to talk more about that after the break. And also, we haven't talked about the First Lady and the Beyond Zero, huh? Yes. Because you, you got to meet her. I did, and it was amazing. And, Hold yes. that thought. Okay. Did she play some football? I did give her a branded football. Did she kick that. it? No, we didn't make her kick it. <laughs> well, uh, let's talk more about that. And also moving forward, yes. the future. Mm -hmm. Is it rosy? Is it bright? Mm -hmm. Like Oprah Winfrey once told me, the future is so bright, it blinds my eyes. Mm -hmm. Do you see the future bright for these kids, these girls of the future? www.mtgk.com. Dot .org. Dot .org. Yes. I'll say that again. www.mtgk.org. MTG standing for Moving the Goalposts. Kilifi. Check it out. Get more information. If you want to get involved, this is a no-brainer. Young ladies out there wondering 
what am I going to do? Where am I going? This could be the answer. And by the way, what about the boys? What happens to the boys? Let's talk about that after the break. At MTG Khalifi, at Koinanga Jeff, the hashtag is JKL. And JKL will be back in a moment.